<laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello, Mia. So good to be with you today. Oh, it's so nice to be with you always, Johan, and, and to be with all of you. We're excited for today's Facebook Live. So excited. Thank you all also, as always, for your questions, for your feedback. First of all, let me know if you can hear us. Let us know if you can hear us. Like, give us a thumbs up or a little heart or whatever you want to send in so that we know you're with us. And we'd also, as always, love to know where you're calling in from. And uh, see, people are joining in. Wonderful. So that means probably that this is working. And great, so let's go right ahead. And we're very excited to be with you today to speak more as we announced about the unerring system uh, for discovering and really living with complete inner peace and be free from suffering regardless of circumstances so that your life can be a life of flourishing, of ease, of being just comfortable in our own skin. Uh, and many more benefits and results that you have uh, seen and heard about in the Bright Group, if you're with us already in that group. So as Mia and I will speak about this, um, what we really wanted to do is we know that many of you who are coming here today have probably been seeking the results I've just mentioned for quite some time in your life. We have really discovered that many people who come to Balanced View have years, sometimes even decades or quite a few decades of seeking uh, on their shoulders. So with everything that comes along with that, you know, it's like having maybe occasional breakthroughs, having insights, having some realizations, but also often having like a truckload of disappointment, of like dashed hopes and of just an, an uncertainty if they even want to continue with this because there is just this like up and down and finding and then losing and yesterday i got it and this morning i woke up I, again i feel miserable and so today what we want to do is not so much speak about the result which we often do and we will do today as well but really give you basically a almost like a checklist so that you can see that you can basically see your approach so far to a life of complete freedom, flourishing and peace of mind, how you've approached this topic so far and what we have found in our research really are cornerstones of a like a real system that can bring about those results. And then you can see for yourself where in, in which of these areas we're covering today could you use um, like an upgrade, a refresh, or maybe even a reorientation? And where are you doing great? Because it's also great to celebrate where you're doing awesome. This isn't about making anything wrong or making anyone wrong. It's really just sharing our experience with you of what we found are just key foundational, like I said, cornerstones that bring about a result consistently. So where you don't need to hope and fear and do all this, but where you know this is a system that works. And then you can see how how that relates to your own direct experience. Does that sound good? That sounds great, Johan. And this is such a hot topic. This is a great topic, at least uh, for me and my direct experience, because this was definitely my experience where I had been searching for decades and there was a lot of benefit, but uh, it didn't really take it all. Nothing really took it all the way to just complete freedom in my life, that peace, that fulfillment, that stability that I was looking for until I stumbled across the, the support structure here in Balanced View. So it's great to be able to, to share about this so openly. And we meet people all over the world who come, just as you shared, with this um, just, just same pattern of searching, being involved in many things, and the pitfalls and also the wins, but really just being completely done with uh, the the search and wanting just the results, this in their own direct experience and how this is 100% possible. Mm, that's beautiful, Mia. And I, I, yeah, I remember I felt the same way. And 
the interesting part for me was, as I often share on these on these um, on these interviews, for me it was astonishing how just literally one meeting with with Candace, the founder of Balanced View, clarified more for me about the nature of mind and really my like existence as a human being and revealed more to me than six years of psychology um and you know all the others seeking that i did just and and i didn't know why that was i thought candace is just a genius which she is undoubtedly but what i learned since that was uh 12 and a half years ago what i learned since is that even though it was just a talk so to speak i didn't see the entire system that was behind that talk like the stage so to speak on which that talk was given and like how strong the foundation of that was so what seems to somebody like it's just a talk um it actually is that has an amazing result it actually has this amazing result because there is this very specific system we sometimes speak about it as an algorithm that goes into each of these presentations and we'll share a bit more about this today as well but just so that you already know when we speak in the online training if you've done our free training we share that candace has researched the founder of balanced view candace has researched this topic of how can humans live a life where they're not just free from suffering and have peace of mind but where we can on the basis of that have flourishing relationships where we can bring our strengths, gifts, and talents, where we can bring our passions into all areas of life, because this like self-improvement project falls away, and then we suddenly have all this time and energy. So all of these components were really important for her, and she traveled the world, she's like cruised through the libraries, she's written, rewritten, translated, she's just looked into so many teachings like really obvious ones really obscure ones that i wouldn't even know where to find them or get my hands on them and um, from that distilled all this to instead of just looking for what philosophy do i like she really distilled it to what can bring people from where they are today to what is being described here what are the step-by-step processes what are the elements that are in place in a culture in a society or in a group of people where the same result has been consistently achieved okay so as we share about this we're really not just you know sharing our own experience which we always do but really i i wanted to emphasize this is what has come about through over 45 years of research um, so when we share about these things, that isn't just something that we, you know, thought up or that Candice just woke up one morning and and thought, oh yeah, right, let's do it like this. There is just so much systematic, ongoing research that went into this. And really, as I said, everyone who's coming here, we have our own challenges, whether it's like challenges in relationships or maybe you're struggling with challenges in your health, whether that's physical health or you know mental health that you feel sad or depressed or have worries anxiety um and uh, or maybe you're just looking for the meaning of life maybe you know these like basic things are okay in your life and and you still don't feel fulfilled you still know there is like this nagging feeling there is just something missing in your life and um as i said before just as we go through those different elements today through the cornerstones of an unerring system that leads to the specific result consistently um, we'd love for you to just check which of these things have you done like how has this been in your experience this isn't like to convince you of like that what we're doing is the greatest and the best it's much more important for you to really check where are you at where are you at in your life where are you at with coming from where you are today to where you always wanted to be what has supported you on the way what didn't support you on the way what are things that you maybe have done every day that actually don't even support you so then why would you keep doing them if they don't support you right so just see it more like a checklist um where you can see how far you've come already and celebrate that and then also see where there are gaps 
And then at the end of the meeting today, we'll also share with you how you could close some of those gaps. But for now, let's maybe just go into the four elements now um, that Candace has identified and that in balanced view, we call those the four mainstays. And when you hear them, they might just sound so simple and obvious that you think, well, sure, what's the big deal about this? And again, just we'll reveal the details as we go through each one of them. I don't know actually how much we will be able to cover all of them today. We might do this in two parts, depending on you know, your questions and, and also what you want to hear about. Um, but we'll we'll go into the details so that you can see even as i said before even though it looks very simple so that you can see which of these things are actually working for you what are the results that you have achieved so far in those areas and which ones uh, could use an upgrade or could even be replaced with something that might support you better on the way okay so the first one of those um is that what Candace identified is that wherever there was a large group of people who realized complete freedom and then took that freedom into every aspect of their life so that they were flourishing in their relationships, that they had the power and the capacity to bring their unique strengths, gifts and talents to the world, to their everyday life, was that they all relied on a very simple practice. And, um, Maybe Mia, you could share more about the practice, and then we can compare that to some of the few, some of the things that um, you know that that people are trying to use in today's world in order to arrive at a peaceful mind or in order to achieve freedom from from suffering. Sure. So um, yeah, this is this is you know one of the main tenets or components of the support structure um, of the four mainstays. The four mainstays are just, uh, oh, just as you shared, Johan, such a, um, you know, really key to igniting, illuminating this freedom that we already are, that we already have, the, the stability, the peace, the unleashing of our strengths, gifts, and talents. And so many people that I talk to, um, just from around the world, feel like they've been missing this piece, just a complete support package, a formula of support, an algorithm. Um, and so the first component, just like people are like, wait, what's an algorithm? You know, some people know what an algorithm is and other, others are like, what is an algorithm? An algorithm is just simply when it's a formula. And so when you implement every component of the formula, you get specific results. And the first component here, just like you said, is, a, is the simple practice. And that is relying on open intelligence, our vast intelligence, uh, just for a moment. And through this, we become familiar with this intelligence. Um, so it's just a very simple thing for a lot of, most of us or a lot of us who have um, dabbled in many uh, approaches, especially in terms of like meditation, which, you know, is just a, it's a beautiful practice. Yet for me, it was about um, really trying to get somewhere that I had to be in a certain position and force myself um, to have certain thoughts or to let go of the thoughts. And here we're just tapping in for a moment, just a moment, tapping into that natural state of who we are open intelligence, open, vast, and free, that freedom that already exists within us, naturally present. Whenever we remember, we, we just familiarize, acknowledge this vast intelligence. And this is so simple. We call it a simple practice because it's not just another thing, another trip, another thing we have to effort for or struggle or discipline ourselves with. Just simply whenever we remember, we allow everything to be exactly as it is, all our thoughts, emotions, sensations, and experiences, and just allow the short moment of 
our vast intelligence. It's it's just so simple. What's amazing is that <clears throat> we don't have to, again, be in a certain position, have it be a certain time of the day. You know, we can be doing the dishes, running in a heated conversation, and uh, boom, there is open intelligence. There is the freedom within the f flying thoughts and heavy emotions. And this is really just the, the access, the confirmation just for a moment. So it is a very simple practice. Um, again, whenever we remember, I love that Candace, you know, shared this instruction right from the beginning. It wasn't like short moments. You need to do this all the time. You, you know, just like another really, um, you know, just mean and means and method that, that we had to kind of like be hard on ourselves with here. Just whenever we remember, we familiarize ourselves with the nature of our mind. We familiarize ourselves with the freedom within whatever is arising for us in our lives, no matter if it's a thought, emotion, sensation, or experience. It sounds so simple, almost too simple, but we are who we are and we all innately know this. So to be able to just touch into this knowing for a moment, access this knowing for a moment in a very relaxed way, it just opens and expands everything. It's almost like the, the flame is already burning and we just through short moments, this simple practice, we're turning up the flame brighter and brighter and brighter. Mm, beautiful, thank you, Mia. And um, yeah, I wanted to just say, this is like w one of the things that, that we said before, it, it sounds so simple and it really is simple. And sometimes that simplicity is, it takes some time for that to, to settle in and to even gain, you know, after working so hard to have a little bit more stability, to have a little bit more freedom, to have a little bit more like sanity in life to suddenly have something that is so simple and effortless, it almost feels like, you know, cheating or it can't be true or, you know, it's like there must be more to it or something. And, um, but when you think about it, how, if, if what you want is to live as your true nature, how could that be difficult? If it is your true nature, how could that be difficult? And, um, you know, so we'll talk about this in a moment when we go more into like the teaching part. But um, if you if you have a. If you have like a philosophy that says, you know, that human beings are, are good, innately good, basically, and then in each tradition that is put a you know, bit differently, but then the the most straightforward way to access your gifts your talents your goodness is to do that directly rather than taking a detour through purifying through trying not to have you know negative thoughts or everything you just return to the essence again and again and like mia beautifully you introduced the essence we call that open intelligence which is as simple as like what's looking through your eyes right now so simple and direct it isn't something that you get in the future like many practices complicate they overcomplicate this matter so much because we we take ourselves to be a somebody like this tiny destructible um often mixed bag <laughs> of qualities and and we need to become this like exalted projection of only you know having positive thoughts emotions and sensations like being the perfect buddha or jesus or you know whoever you have in mind for for how that should look and then um we're constantly efforting to reach that kind of place even though we don't even quite know how to get there exactly or how other people got there and um the the underlying the underlying reason why this doesn't work is that the entire framework is incorrect and uh it's it's like a flawed 
system, you could say, no matter how much, how good you work a flawed system, it will never bring you a result because the system, the, the, the formula isn't correct. And then even though you go through it correctly, the result isn't what you expect because the formula is incorrect. And so, like I said, many, many practices that I have done were very complicated. Um, they required a lot of work. Like when I was into meditation, I do everything that I'm doing. Like usually I do it like at least 100%. I try to do more. But uh, so when I came across meditation and I didn't get results right away, I thought, okay, it must be me. So I thought, okay, what is like the most like out there meditation like where I could dive in fully and I did like retreats where you like you're silent and you have 10 hours for 10 days where you just like learn this thing and you get it down and um and then you know integrated that into my day I meditated several hours a day um so it it took a lot of time it took a lot of focus it took a lot of energy um and you know i did have moments of peace there i also had a lot of time where i was speeding myself up because i was thinking instead of what i thought was meditating and because i had like all kinds of outbursts of angry thoughts and emotions amidst that activity that should be so holy and pure and so there were many things even amidst the practice that felt i wasn't doing it right and i didn't have anybody to ask I was missing that too. Like I couldn't say, hey, this is my experience. Um, can you just tell me one, two, three, these are the things you need to do. And then, you know, what what should I do um, when it basically doesn't work? It doesn't give me the results. And I think the most, the most, like the biggest letdown for me of that specific um, test that I had done at the time was, um, that I was in the same situation again and uh, that I found very challenging before and the practice wasn't available to me. I would have had to go back into my room, sit on the cushion and like center myself in, in a few minutes of meditation instead of like kicking in right in the spot where I needed it. And so based on that experience again I, I did have beautiful experiences what i was missing was the applicability of that experience when i needed it the most you know which was when like the going gets tough so like when i'm in a conversation with somebody and i feel all my buttons are being pushed i don't have time to then say well let's meet again tomorrow at 10 because that will be after i've meditated i, I need a response like right now <laughs> i need to know how to conduct myself i need to know how to bring what i know i can bring to the situation how to bring that everything in there not to be distracted by the stuff that goes on in my mind and if you knew my kind of mind there is always something going on in there a lot so i i needed something that that gives me access to these qualities amidst everyday life, not like as two lives where I have a spiritual life or a, a practice life, like a test run, and then I have my real life. And that's what I love about this practice is that short moments of open intelligence again and again throughout life, you're, you're accessing your, your fundamental nature as it already is you're accessing that you're not creating this even if you never practice what we're teaching here for an instant your true nature wouldn't change an inch it's just that by a simple practice you make that nature usable it's like living on a gold mine and then instead of running around in circles on in your shack and just hoping and praying and doing all kinds of other weird things to access that gold mine you just scratch the floor and you see wow there's tons of gold there that's all you need like just look down maybe you don't even have to scratch the floor you just need to actually look down and recognize this incredible treasure and so that's how simple this practice is and obviously we can't go into like super great detail but just again uh, in, 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 in this talk today, but just again, just check, is your practice giving you that kind of a support? Like, do you find that your practice supports you in accessing your full potential on a moment to moment basis? Another great question 
that I that I began asking myself uh, when I was in therapy was, um, and then did that also throughout other kinds of things that I've tested is, who has achieved results with this practice? Are these just people you know I read about in a book, or are these people who are right in front of me? Like, can I can I see tangible results? Like, okay, five years ago or five weeks ago or whenever you had my experience and today your experience is different and and then do i want this kind of experience is this something that i want in my life or is it an experience like i met some communities in my own travels around the world where i thought you know if that's the result of the practice i'm happy that they have found what they were looking for but it wouldn't be my cup of tea it wouldn't be something that i would want and then obviously it, it wasn't the practice that i wanted to take on so just asking yourself these fundamental questions like how effective is that practice like in your own direct experience already but then also in other people who you see around uh, people who have practiced this and who you know have practiced this for how long how much time how much money how much focus have they invested and what is the result and do you want that result for yourself is that something that you aspire to okay so these are some fundamental questions you can ask yourself and definitely i see a comment there from someone who says you don't need to join the club in order to have these results no we don't want you to join the club if you have what you want be happy as you are. I have no wish or interest to convince you of anything. However, I know many people who don't know what to do, who don't have a system, who don't have a practice, who are confused by the teachings they're hearing, who reap havoc in their own life and in the lives of other people and know there must be a better way. So if that's not you, then, you know, be my guest, be happy, do whatever you would like to do. But don't let other people go into extremes of thinking they can just sit around and hope that something will change eventually through some kind of graceful insight because it's likely that it won't happen. I don't know, in fact, anybody who's achieved like the fullness of their potential um, just by doing that. So having a system that supports, I found incredibly supportive and um, if anybody else feels that way, then you're most welcome to check it out. And if not, then don't worry about it. All right. So Mia, shall we move on to the next to the next one? What do you think? Or do you sure. have anything more about the practice we should cover? No, I think that sounds great. I think just the simplicity um, of it that you shared, Johan, from your own direct experience is you know, really helpful for everyone to hear. And for those of us, I know you're a very disciplined, um, have a very, you know, disciplined disposition and um, really tested out those different practices to their fullest and didn't find the results you were looking for. Um, for me, I just immediately needed something very simple. I had absolutely no patience with diving into um, complicated or disciplined methods and and um, jumping through a lot of you know hoops, and so to to uh, just have such a simple practice is you know it really works for all dispositions. It's amazing, uh, you know. It, it really is, um, yeah, just a, a beautiful access, just like you shared, um, to the nature of our mind, to that peace, to that still stability, to this our skillful means open heartedness all these qualities that we already have that are already naturally present and mm -hmm. um, really just the again the simplicity is uh it's yeah really powerful very result oriented so perfect to move on to the second component of this algorithm yeah, and Mia, let me just, I, I just uh, inspired me again so much, um, what you just said. It's, I mean, when I, when I think how much of my discipline I've spent um, really trying all these things, and not even, I, I think the worst part about it when I now consider that, I've never thought about it this way, I don't think, or maybe I forgot, but anyway, um, the worst part about this is that I really did my best. You know, like I tried so hard, like it, it almost 
brings me to tears when I think of what I put myself through. Like I'm, I'm not a person who wants to get up early in the morning. And, uh, but I thought I have to get up at 4 a.m. every day because that's when the energy in the world is, um, you know, on this earth is like appropriately aligned. And I, I need to do that in order to purify my thoughts. And, um, like become enlightened basically i mean i don't even remember anymore what i was expecting but so i got up to the no well no i put my alarm to four i would say in half of the times i just like hit the snooze button or turned it off altogether and like had weird dreams of guilt and blame and shame and all kinds of things because i somehow knew you know like i should be meditating or I would get up and I would just fall asleep on my cushion, on my meditation cushion and had exactly the same thoughts. So what should have given me like peace and flow and ease and you know all these like lovely things I was expecting from meditation, it made me feel worse. And I, you know, I was trying so hard and um, so diligent. And um, so, yeah, it's, it, it really breaks my heart to, to think, and again, if, if you like meditation, you know, I love to sit today, but I'm not trying to get anywhere. I'm not beating myself up. I'm just sitting. You know, I could be running around. I could take a walk or I could work or I can just take a few minutes to sit quietly. So there isn't anything wrong with the activity. What is missing for many people who do that activity is the right understanding for what they're actually doing. Um, so maybe i see we're we're getting a bit late already we've already spent half an hour together man that's amazing so maybe let's let's share a bit more about the teaching um as the second you know like an, an unerring direct uncomplicated precise teaching because it somehow plays together with the practice anyway and then maybe we can cover the other aspects um yeah the other aspects of the of of the system that that we have found um, on another on another call, and I just see here we have a question. I need my glasses for that. Um, okay, I think uh, Mia, maybe you can start with the teaching part, and then we can address the the last comment as well um, later on after you've introduced the teaching. Sure. Um, thank you, Johan. Yes, <laughs> so good to speak about uh, uh, short moments of open intelligence repeated many times until they become continuous, the, uh, the simple practice. And then the, um, as we move on to the second, which is a clear and precise teaching, um, it is a, I know when I approached um, many different um, I th I teachings or workshops or reading books and everything resonated with me, yet there was kind of a vagueness, just a certain vagueness where it didn't seem to lead me directly to the, the source, to the basis, to the essence of everything, where I was directly experiencing this in my own in my own life, practically, in my own direct experience, not just like a, a um, philosophy or kind of an intellectual understanding or a resonance here and there, but really a direct teaching that was so piercing and hit the mark. And, uh, you know, that's really what I found here in Balanced View, an incredible master in bringing the ancient wisdom teachings forward in modern day language and accessibility. And this was key for me, you know, I was really trying to um, access this in from, you know, different cultures and different languages and different customs. And, oh, I just, I really prayed for, uh, f yeah, finding a, a teacher and teachings, a trainings that were, um, you know, just very similar to my life now, to just the current modern day life, but but kept that wisdom 
you know, really kept that potency, that transmission power that hit the mark. And so, you know, the, the balance view training is um, just amazing in the collection of text and the collection of um, media that really deliver uh, the result for us in just such a clear way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that it's it's such a rare find. Again, I have um, I wasn't only meditating; I also read a lot. Like, that was one of my main inputs, also because my my dear wife was an avid reader at the time of like, and she always brought home like the, all these books that then were everywhere in our house. Um, and uh, so there are a few things that I found when I then again especially in hindsight looking back it's much easier to see like what the elements were that like that were difficult or maybe even that were in the way for me to realize the nature of reality as i see it today after participating in the balanced view training and, and having this direct guidance from candace and one is that um as i shared in the very beginning I, I found it very confusing because many teachings have like mixed messages in a way, like everything is pure, perfect and so forth, but there is still something wrong with you that you need to get rid of. Like, uh, you know, everyone is a Buddha or you have Buddha nature or something that I felt, wow, that's so beautiful. But then in the next sentence it would say, and you need to purify your mind, you know, or like you find the same thing things in the Bible, you find them in the Indian, you just find them everywhere. And so I found that like super confusing, like these internal inconsistencies, like there's this hope, this aspiration. Yeah, right. I have Buddha nature. And as long as you, <laughs> as you have negative thoughts, as long as you have negative, harsh feelings about others, you're impure. Now, those two don't go together. You're either pure and perfect or, or you're not. But if um, if you if 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 you resonate with these teachings that confirm your beautiful, direct, powerful, pure, perfect nature, then stick with the teaching that really confirms that that doesn't contradict itself and says, you know, like only the people who realize this are pure or only men are pure. I mean, this might sound funny in the twenty first century, but when you look at how many spiritual teachers or monks or you know in higher ranks there are in different traditions it is amazing the gender bias that there is in some of these in some of these teachings and um so if if you find that there is like some confusion and internal inconsistency it 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 shows that no matter how hard you'll practice this teaching, you'll always bump your head against this glass ceiling because there is something in the message that no matter how hard you try and think about it, you won't get your head around it. It's a bit like what I said before about the formula. If the formula is incorrect, then no matter how diligently you apply it, you won't arrive where you want to go. Um, the other part that I found is like it's often I've just found it super exhausting. Like in Western psychology, I learned that I have a mind and, you know, how to handle that mind. When I opened my first uh, Buddhist psychology book, don't even ask me which one it is. I have no idea anymore. It's a long time ago, but I learned how many minds I have and how each of these minds has many different gates. And it's my job to protect each one of these gates diligently to not let any impure perceptions go in there it was freaking me out because it's like was hard enough to control one mind now i had like 120 gates that i need to watch out for and it, it just it didn't again it didn't give me any peace that's why i bought the book because it was called the psychology of peace and it, it didn't do that something like that um or path to peace or something like that um, so these are just a few things where, you, again, look at is the teaching something that resonates so deeply with your deepest heart wish and like your your knowledge, your your just instinctive knowing of the value of the beauty of the perfection that you have within yourself 
or does it introduce all these other middle layers like an ego or you know like the pain body or or this other thing that makes you into somehow this flawed little being that needs to hope pray do all these other things in order to achieve this other thing because if that's what the message is it it isn't a simple and pure a, a, a simple teaching of of perfection or of purity it's it's just a different kind of teaching and then when you see that you can choose which one do i resonate more with again look at you know what are the results people have who rely on that teaching and so forth so again pack take your checklist and see um uh see how that you know how that relates i just see a question here about the law of attraction how that's different um, I've seen many different versions of that, so I don't want to comment on that in like, you know, like just glossing over, but I'm happy to share my own experience about it. Um, and many of the things that I've tried, like positive affirmations or trying to manifest like the reality that I really want, it simply didn't work for me. You know, it sounded good when I read some of the books, it made me feel better in that moment. <clears throat> but then, one of the worst things for me was that I felt all the people in the world were suffering. I basically, I would then blame them for creating their own suffering. You know, like the rich people, they manifest their richness and I, and, and all these people in like developing countries who like, where there is so much, you know, internalized oppression and just global systems that are just completely out of whack in today's world it's their fault and this isn't just the law of attraction there are other law you know like karma and all these other ideas that i felt personally i don't want to just accept these things um and gloss over them um and then much more personally when i felt faced with negative states i've i blame my a bit like with meditation before i blame myself even more because in that moment i was basically manifesting my my negativity do you know what i mean and and what i realize is um the simpler way even like i know for some people this actually does work they are able to create themselves you could say what looks like a heaven realm what i find interesting is that when i hear again this is a very limited experience just sharing my own experience maybe you have a different experience which is great but what i'm hearing is like even if you can manifest positive things then there is a rampant desire for more and more and more positive things so the peace of mind that i want for myself it rests in itself it isn't the frantic like more 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 it is just innately at peace it abides in its own natural perfection that's that's the kind of peace i want you know for other people that might be different but th these were the two things that i found within myself were very difficult to like reconcile within my heart i knew i wanted for myself and that i wanted to like be, you know get in touch with or become familiar with Okay, great. I'm, I'm glad that clarified. And Mia, back to you. Oh, sure. Thank you, uh, Johan. That's a, that's a really good point. And it's so good to hear, like, just direct experiences, because that's really what we're talking about here is, is, um, you know, reflecting on, you know, what is working for you in your life now, and what is possible and to be able to share from our experience what is possible and hear from people all around the world. And how incredible that this, uh, you know, the actual teaching, the second com component of this formula of support um, really a, a delivers a very direct introduction, an introduction to the nature of mind, an introduction to who we are and the nature of everything. And again, just go straight to the root. For me, there just couldn't anything that took me up into my head of more like intellectual philosophizing. I was just like, ah, oh, you know, I just, I was so not interested in that. 
And so it was amazing to just actually read through the, the first text and have an introduction to open intelligence and the introduction and boom, immediately, you know, there was a, a understanding, a greater understanding, a deepening of what I knew to be true, but hadn't really been able to access this. And, um, and then also, you know, just having the text again, um, be so potent and so direct, and really apply to uh, our practical daily lives as well, because the um, recognition of open intelligence, the illumining and um, enlivening of the qualities of who we already are, the qualities of open intelligence um, is again, purpose for us to contribute, to be of benefit, to know that stability, to know that clarity, to directly experience that deep comfort, satisfaction and fulfillment of who we are as a human being, as a great agent of, of limitless potential and be able to contribute that in our lives. It's so simple, it's just so simple, yet through a direct teaching, again, the access. And I love that the text really confirm, you know, they confirm this knowing that we have this resonance that we have had, you know, for so many years here and there, but it just directly confirms it. Key points, pith instructions, and boom, you know, just in such an effortless way, there is a, a, a greater understanding, a, a deeper, a deepening in that knowing. And it's not, I, I love that when you read through the text in the teaching, um, again, it doesn't bring you up into your head <laughs> you have to try to figure it out. As Candace would say, figuring out is not a part of this teaching. <laughs> Thank God, you know, I mean, it just, that is so helpful. And, um, but it really, there is just an effortless transformation, uh, an effortless illumination. And um, that it is so practical, just so practical so satisfying and so practical. So a direct teaching I can just, you know, see is, is key. It's a key element to the support structure. Mm. Beautiful. Yeah, I actually, if I did like philosophizing, but this is so much better than philosophizing. <laughs> Sitting around and talking in clever ways and having, yeah, oh, yeah so much better. Um, great. Well, I see we went a bit longer than we usually go. We've covered like one and three quarter of the of the four uh, points that we wanted to mention today. I had a hunch it would happen like this. Thank you all for your questions and your comments already. We'll just take more time in the coming weeks to deepen this more. Um, also to maybe speak a bit more about the specific teachings and, and how they exactly work um, in bringing about, in like drawing on this inner resource, this treasure that we all house and, and like how to just make that really fully accessible. Um, because even though we already are that and have like half that resource with us, we can become ever more skillful in accessing that resource. So that's that's really it's like having the passcode, username and password to to like open that vault, the treasure trove of just immense immense benefit for ourselves and for for all beings. Um, so for now, thank you so much for joining in today. If this was something that you where you see already, you have specific questions or where you see there are elements that are not working for you in your practice or in your teaching right now we'll talk more about the, the other two elements in the next facebook live but if you already see aspects um where you would like one of us me or me to take some time together and look at this in your own direct life experience like how does this currently play out in your life what is the result of that? And then how can you come from where you are today to where you actually want to be? Then we're offering you a free breakthrough session. 
I do that for everybody who's coming here, um, especially if you've watched the free training already and you have a bit of a context. Um, otherwise, we'll share that link with you as well. But if you want to share more about your direct experience and see any recommendations we could give to you as to how you can like upgrade your practice and what your next steps could be so that you can live with freedom and peace and in a flourishing, really cheerful life, no matter what's happening, no matter what the circumstances are in your life, then we'd love to meet you. Book a call with us. The link will also be either in the comment section here or and or in the post description. And then we'll continue with our conversation here next Sunday, Mia. Sound good? That sounds great, Johan. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. It is just um, such an amazing opportunity to just pass on what's been so generously given and, and share really the results, the practical results from our own direct experience and what's possible for everyone. So thank you, Johan, for your beautiful sharing. And uh, can't wait to be with you all again soon. Thank you, too, Mia. Bye, everybody. Great to be Bye -bye. together.